Welcome to Train Signal. You're watching Active Directory Rights Management 101, and this is a primer on digital rights management in Server 2008. Again, just a quick theory primer to get you moving. You'll probably want to do just a little bit of extra study before you go in and take the certification exam. Now, this is a pretty big area here, and we could probably do about four or six hours just on this one because there's a lot that goes into it. But in this video, I'm going to talk to you about what is rights management. I'm going to throw just a few additional notes about rights management services at you real quick, and then we're going to wrap this one up. All right, so let's talk about what is rights management services. It's really a pretty cool technology. What it has to do with is actually protecting information in a new way. Rather than using NTFS permissions or share level permissions to decide who gets to do what, the rights management functions actually ride along with the files that are created. Let's go ahead and let's take a look at a quick instance here, okay? Uh, first of all, let's say that Bubba creates a Word document, and Bubba wants to make sure that only Sergio can actually see this particular document and do anything with it. Well, what Bubba is going to do is he's going to use Word 2007, and he's going to receive a client licensor certificate from the rights management server the first time he actually protects this document. So Bubba creates a document and then he uses Word 2007 to actually put on a set of protection requirements. So Bubba gets to decide who gets to write to the document, change the document, print the document. There's all kinds of stuff that you can apply to this document in terms of rights. So the rights management server is actually going to issue him a certificate that will encrypt the file and also identify Bubba as the author of the document. Remember back in our certificate services primer that a certificate both identifies users and also encrypts. All right. So Bubba has an encrypted document. Once he has defined who can do what to the document, Word 2007 creates a publishing license using the certificate that was issued from the RMS server, the client licensor certificate. So then the file gets encrypted with that publishing license. Then Bubba actually sends that file over to, maybe he posts it onto a share, and as long as Sergio is on the list of people who get to actually do something with the document, even just open it, by the way, Bubba could actually restrict anyone but Sergio from opening the document. So whether Bubba posts it on your share or emails a document doesn't make any difference because the rights and the encryption, all that good stuff, rides right along with the document over to Sergio. Now Sergio opens up the document, at least he tries. Word, what's going to happen is Word 2007 is going to make a call out to the RMS server and is going to check to see if Sergio is actually on the user list who gets to do something with the document. If he is, which in this case he is, <laughs> then he gets to just open it up like normal and gets to perform anything that Bubba has allowed Sergio to perform on the document. Word 2007, any, by the way, what we might call a rights management services aware application. And there's not a huge amount of them out there, but Office 2007 is a major one that everyone's going to know. Word actually is actually going to enforce any rights and anything that Bubba has actually placed onto the document. Now, since Sergio is on the list, he's also going to get a decryption key from the use license that is issued from the RMS server. Okay, so Sergio is going to get to also decrypt and then do with the document as Bubba has allowed him to do. Now, this is a big deal in terms of putting the encryption and the protection and security of a document on the user rather than on us as administrators. Now the users get to decide who gets to open up the document and who doesn't get to open up the document. Or even who gets to print the document and who gets to not print it. Or you know whatever it may be, however the user decides to secure that document is going to be what's going to happen. Now then, just a couple of quick notes here about what is required for this. Now, first of all, you're going to need an Active Directory box, okay? Because we need to have a list of users that we're going to allow or disallow particular rights to a particular file, okay? Or we may even use a group, right? We may say that all of the NY sales managers gets get to open and print the document, but all of the 
NY sales users may not, okay? Or maybe the Chicago users get to and, and you know, New York users do not. I mean, there's any un kind of variations. Whatever the user decides, the author of the document decides is going to play. But that particular function is directed by who's in Active Directory, okay? Now, we're also going to need, by the way, a SQL Server. Now, this particular component may actually disallow some people from actually utilizing RMS, but you will need to have a SQL Server to store the rights management information into. And this SQL Server, if you're going to do this right, should be on a separate box. Can it be on the same box as RMS? If it's a very small network and you have a very small amount of users, yes. Neither one of these boxes, though, neither one of these functions, SQL Server or RMS, should be on your domain controller, though. Okay, That's a bad idea. Remember, way, way back, we talked about having our domain controllers be separate because they've got a lot of work to do. We don't need them, their resources to be taken up from a, by a SQL Server or an RMS machine. So you are going to need those, at least those three components intact, and you're also going to need an RMS-aware authoring application like Office 2007. So that's a basic idea of what happens with RMS. Again, the user gets to decide who gets to read and whatnot, and we are utilizing Active Directory and SQL Server to authenticate and decide who gets to do what with the document. All of this stuff is made possible, though, by this RMS server and the certificates and licenses that it creates. Notice that there's something that's missing there, and I'll talk to you about that in just a second here. Uh, some stuff that you need to know. First of all, I mentioned this to you already. The application that creates the file must be RMS aware. Office 2007 is a good example. When you create a document in Office 2007, and I really should say when you create a document in Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and <laughs> also in Outlook, because RMS can be used with email, then you can turn around and apply rights management right inside of the interface. You don't need additional plugins or anything. It's right there in the application already. Now, the rights that are assigned to the file travel along with the file, even though we do have stuff about that file in the SQL database and on the RMS server, but the rights are traveling along with the file, which means that access to the RMS server and the SQL box are going to be required. Now, if somebody isn't on the list of users who can open a file or print a file or whatever it is, they can't do it. They can't open the file. So we have to be very specific about making sure that the right user gets the right access to the file. And that's going to be, again, a responsibility that's on the author, not on the system administrator. Remember, when we're working with folders on the servers and stuff, that's going to probably be our responsibility in terms of setting up permissions or whatnot. But with rights management services, the security and the authorization is uh, put onto the author. So it's kind of a switch here that a lot of people aren't really sure if that's a good idea or not, but that's the way it is with RMS. Now, the certificates that are used in RMS are not dependent upon Active Directory certificate services. The certificates and the keys and the private keys and all that, they're actually created by the RMS server. You don't need to have certificate services running in order to use RMS. What you do need to have, though, is you do need to have SQL Server and you do need to have a domain controller. And by the way, you can also have, on the SQL Server side, you can have SQL Server 2000, SQL Server 2005. So even older versions of SQL will work with this particular server role. Now, remember that little bit I did on Federation Services? We briefly touched upon it in, back in the Trusts video. It does work with federation services, so if you need to control information bouncing back and forth between two companies, you can do that. It also works with SharePoint, too. right? So that's going to be a big deal, especially when you have a partnership between two organizations. Using RMS with SharePoint to not only just share information out there, but also secure who gets to do what with the information, that's a big deal. Okay? Now, there's also some really great reporting tools that are built right into rights management in Server 2008. You can actually see who accessed a document, who failed to access a document, who tried to access it. <laughs> there's all kinds of stuff that Server 2008 provides you in terms of reporting on this particular function. Okay. All right, so 
one more quick RMS in a nutshell here. Uh, rights management service, by the way, this is a server role. Uh, it requires an RMS server. You need a separate box for it, a SQL server, an Active Directory domain controller, and an RMS-aware application like Office 2007. The author of a document gets to set up who gets to do what on a document, and they do that from inside of the Rights Management Services Aware application like Word 2007 or Excel 2007. And they decide, based on users and groups from Active Directory, who gets to do what with that particular file. Now remember, you don't need a separate Active Directory Certificate Services system. All right? You don't need a separate box for that. RMS. All the certificates are handled on the RMS server. Also remember though that if the RMS server goes down and a user has not gotten a usage license, they won't be able to access it. However, if a user has already gotten a usage license to open up a file, they're going to be okay while the RMS server is down. It does work with Federation Services and SharePoint and there's some very seriously cool tools to audit who has had access to the protected files and maybe who has not. Okay, that is the end of our RMS primer. Again, a real short, theoretical, make you aware kind of thing. And keep in mind, you might want to do just a little bit more study about this before you go in and take the certification exam. And if you're not sure where to go study for it, go to Microsoft.com, type in Windows Server 2008 Technical Library, and look it up. Okay. That would probably be as much extra study as you may need. Of course, you can never substitute real-life experience, right? So if you get a chance, go ahead and set yourself up some machines with some trial software for SQL Server, for Server 2008, and get yourself a couple of virtual machines running Server 2008 and try all of this stuff out. Well, friends, that is the end of this course. So thanks for hanging in there with me till the very end. I wish you good fortune to, on your certification exams if you're going to go take them. And until the next course, take care of yourself and do good out there.